a major conflict between President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Vice President Sara Duterte is stirring Philippine politics, creating a public spectacle as the two powerful families clash. The latest tension erupted after Duterte claimed she had ordered a hitman to assassinate Marcos if she were to be killed. A shocking statement that has alarmed many and prompted a strong response from the president. To take revenge against two, three individuals. So, my question now to the administration, is revenge from the grave a crime? In a national address, President Marcos condemned what he called reckless threats and vowed to take serious action. Though he didn't mention Duterte by name, his message made it clear that he viewed her claim as dangerous. Philippine security forces have increased the president's protection, treating the situation as a significant threat. In response, the Justice Department has issued a subpoena to Duterte, demanding she explain her comments within five days. The feud isn't new, it has been growing since Duterte resigned from Marcos's cabinet in June. She has since called him unfit to lead and used strong language to criticize him. Recently, she even described their relationship as toxic and joked about beheading him. In a particularly dramatic statement, she even threatened to remove the remains of Marcos's late father from the National Cemetery. With the May midterm elections approaching, this conflict could reshape Philippine politics. As voters prepare to elect new representatives, half the Senate and various local officials, Marcos's team hopes to strengthen their influence. But the feud with Duterte's family threatens to complicate these plans, potentially affecting both families' popularity. Economic issues add to the pressure on Marcos's administration. Although general inflation has dropped, rice prices remain high, putting a spotlight on Marcos's campaign promises to stabilize essential goods. Duterte's camp has criticized his handling of the economy, widening the rift. At the core of their dispute is Marcos's push to change the constitution to attract foreign investment. Duterte's allies worry this may shift the government to a parliamentary system, positioning Marcos's cousin and ally, House Speaker Martin Romualdez, as a likely successor. Duterte has expressed concern, criticizing Romualdez, while mostly avoiding direct attacks on Marcos. Adding to the tension is an investigation by the International Criminal Court, ICC, into Duterte's father, former President Rodrigo Duterte, for his war on drugs, which could lead to a warrant for his arrest. Marcos has stated that the Philippines won't cooperate with the ICC, but international investigators may still enter the country. This situation puts more pressure on Sara Duterte as she tries to balance support for her father with her responsibilities as vice president. Duterte's public image is distinctive. She has a tough, no-nonsense style, often wearing military-inspired clothing and speaking bluntly. Known for bold actions like punching a court official when she was Davao's mayor, she stands apart from other female politicians who often project a more nurturing image. Her request for $11.6 million in confidential funds for her office in the 2024 budget faced public criticism, causing her approval rating to drop from 84% to 73%. However, her popularity remains higher than Marcos's, whose approval stands at 65%. The speculation that Speaker Romualdez and other political figures could be working against her only adds to the drama. Observers describe Duterte's position as a double game in which she stays close to the administration while keeping a critical distance, especially from Marcos's inner circle. Many believe this careful balancing act is part of a long-term political strategy as she positions herself for a potential presidential run in 2028. Military officials aware of the tension are urging the armed forces to remain neutral and uphold the constitution to maintain stability the public is captivated by the spectacle of two political dynasties locked in conflict. Analysts say this feud is leaving Filipino voters feeling like spectators to a family drama, while the country's stability and future leadership remain at stake.